Hello and welcome everyone. I am going to show you today the simplest version of an automatic tree farm you've ever seen. A little bit of disbelief? Ah, uh, yeah, I would be too. This doesn't look too simple. But believe me when I say that this is a lot more simple than other tree farms I've seen. Um, and it's a ton more simple than the original tree farm that I built. The original tree farm that I built that was fully automated, this looked like a disaster. This by relative comparison is very clean. And I hope that I can break this down for you guys and go over it in a way that will make it easy enough for you guys to understand that you could build it yourself even if you're not familiar with the individual components too well. So in my previous videos I've spent great lengths going over tree farms and how farming in this game works. And the reason why I've spent so much time going over the farming aspect of forestry, the mod, is that this is kind of the epitome of what it's designed to do. Have a full automatic, non... how should I say? It takes no input. This takes no additional resources, requires no user feedback. Everything it does is fully automated, fully automatic, and it's self-sufficient on resources. Now, how I have this set up is two bog farms and two tree farms. I think this is the ideal ratio, and uh, I might be wrong, but this seems to be what the designers intended, in my opinion. Um, from way, the way I l look at how they've done the math with all the stuff, this system can be completely neutral in resource uses. And that's what I think is uh, key. You don't overgenerate the resources you need to recycle, which is huge. However, I have taken a couple additional steps to make this easier. And so in making it easier, I've also made the setup of it a little more complex. Um, but let me explain. So oh, you see the basic two tree farms, two bog farms. Um, you might notice that that center bog farm is complex, but everything else looks pretty simple. Well, let's go over it. Um, I'm going to try to break this into single individual steps, so hopefully this can be brought down into a video that's going to be very long but very organized. So first what I want to go over is tree farms. This is my st very standard tree farm, has glowstone around the edge, tree farm in the middle, However, you note that it's even simpler than normal. I only have a single diamond pipe, which says oaks, oak saplings and hummus go into the arboretum, and everything else goes anywhere else at once. Uh, this doesn't have any problems. I have the standard little trick iron gate to make it return back down to the bottom, and this works very fine, very efficient, no problems at all. Now, over here, on the other side, I have the exact same thing mirrored. So all you have is the same pipe, same trick up top, and of course your power going on the side. That's it. Very, very simple. Over here at this farm, this is a peat bog farm. I briefly covered it in my previous video, but I want to talk about it a little more now. What I have here is a peat bog. This is a simple machine. takes bog earth, plants it extremely similar to the arboretum. It does, however, not take saplings, which is nice. It does output a resource as well, and unlike the arboretum which outputs sand, it outputs dirt. Um, so yeah, that's all it does. It's very similar. We have right here the turbary, or turbary? Yeah, turbary, which basically is the logger of this machine type. Uh, this will harvest these blocks, these bog earths. They will mature into peat bog, and will be harvested and that will return a uh, peat material and then turn this peat bog or bog earth whatever into regular dirt which will then be harvested by the peat bog and replanted with new bog earth so it's a very similar process but you don't have to grow a tree so very nice and easy so the resource we get out of this instead of logs is um, peat and the resource we get out of this instead of sand is dirt. So what do we have right here, you might be wondering. These are relays. If you watch my red power video, uh, I covered these. Basically, these are chest blocks. Um, they have a chest inventory. You can put items in them just like a chest. 
all machines treat them like a chest, which is the key part. Uh, red power is not integrated with most of the build craft um, based machines or add-ons. As such, we need these intermediary blocks called relays to basically act as the interface. Since they function as a chest, the game just puts items into it as it would a chest. Um, however, it's set to automatically send any items it has down its pipes, which we can see here, which are red power pipes. So yeah, that's basically all these are, are intermediary blocks here so that I can use red power tubes. Now you might be wondering why I use red power tubes. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. The main reason is actually that forestry equipment is stupid. It puts items into any buildcraft pipe, no matter what type of pipe it is, and it doesn't care about where items are coming from or where they need to go from. It just puts items anywhere. And this makes it extremely difficult to work with when you're trying to fully automate it because you have a lot of material going a lot of different directions and its flow is very chaotic. So I've opted to use red power pipes. You can do this with build craft pipes, however, if you've seen any videos where people have done that, they have to use logic gates everywhere and it gets extremely complicated extremely fast. Um, while this is still complicated, I think this is much simpler. Um, you, feel, you can feel free to get, disagree with me. So okay, I've covered all the simple parts the easy farms. What the heck is going on over here and why can't this be simple? Well this can't be simple because this is where we produce our extra peat bog or not peat bog, bog earth. As you can see here I have an automatic crafting table with bog earth being produced. Um, I have opted to use the water bucket recipe which gives us back our nice little bucket and has a lower bog earth return ratio. We only get six bog earth instead of eight. Because of this, we actually need extra sand in the system because we won't get enough sand to uh, produce, um, produce from the tree farms if we don't. So um, because we are using this less efficient recipe, we have to add our own sand into the system as well as we have to add more dirt, which is why we have that second bog farm over there, is it adds more dirt as well as gives us more peat, which actually it comes into a very important part later but for now basically we need more dirt and then we need sand still um, this is because we don't have enough sand coming in from the tree farms to make up for the fact that we're getting a less efficient recipe we only get eight blocks of bog earth per eight or six blocks of bog earth per eight blocks we spend now where I'm getting all that um, sand from is this little setup right here these one, two, three, four blocks. This gives us all the sand we need. This is called an igneous extruder. This is a new block type that people recommended to me and I am loving it. Um, basically it takes lava and water and makes cobblestone infinitely at no cost and makes stone and obsidian at the cost of some lava and water. But we can make cobblestone forever and it costs no energy, so win-win. Right here we have a relay again. Now you might be wondering why I'm using a relay. That's because buildcraft pipes will accept items forever, um, even if it can't hold them. While relays are a chest, and buildcraft machines know only to fill a chest up as much as it can. It will not fill it up more than it can. So that's the trick here, is these relays are basically acting like a gate. They stop the items from overflowing into the uh, pipe system um, and instead will basically act like a chest holding things back. However, they will also eject items automatically without a red um, or without a wooden pipe. So basically this acts like a chest with a wooden pipe with a loop that automatically prevents it from overflowing onto the earth. It's very, very nice. So now, as you might have noticed several times, this is a pulverizer. It has a very simple purpose. It pulverizes cobblestone into sand, which you can't even see because it's getting removed so fast, and it also produces a byproduct of gravel. Now if I break this block, you'll notice that there's this little pipe beneath it. This is called a void pipe. Um, void pipes are great because they destroy every item that goes into them. As you see down here on this right hand side, I have a pipe little selector that tells me that yellow should go down this bottom section. This bottom section is conveniently tied to that pipe. 
So basically, I'm just destroying all the gravel I get. If you want gravel, however, you can easily pull it out of this bottom system and run it over to our storage system over there. However, I don't want gravel. So that's why there is no gravel in the system. Now over here, you can see another relay. These relays are here because, again, it acts like a gate. Um, it won't overfill this chest, and this machine will stop producing sand once it is full. That's the key point here is these relays are just kind of like cheaty ways of having gates that automatically put items out when they need. They don't take power or redstone signals. It's fantastic. I feel like I've abused them in this setup. So, okay, you know what this these four blocks are. You know what these four blocks are. Whoa. What are these four blocks with redstone engines? <laughs> well, all these chests around here... Um, what these are is an automatic crafting table that has three resources sand dirt and water the infinite sand comes from over here the dirt comes from the peat bogs themselves as i said they have dirt as a resource these are being wired or piped underground back into this chest um, so that gives it dirt and then we have water over here now i'm doing a really cool little trick here with the water um, basically, I'm using these uh, just buckets. There's only three in the system. And it just gets sent down. And if we jump down here, it gets sent down. And we have a liquid transposer. It's transposing water into it. It's getting water from a source over there, which we'll cover later. And what it does is it asks for buckets to be pulled down, puts empty buckets into the transposer, sends full buckets back into this pipe, which are then sent back up here. So the logic's really simple, very easy. There is a trick, however. If you do this normally, you'll run into the problem which the buckets would get pulled too fast. As you notice, this redstone engine over here is blue. This redstone engine is perpetually blue, and this is what a this is one of the important parts. Normally you would need to have more buckets in the system to make it not immediately accidentally pull out before this one could pulse to uh, grab it. And you would also have a problem with empty buckets getting caught up in the system and all sorts of weird problems I ran into when I was doing this. Um, but because this is permanently blue, it will only suck out buckets so slowly that there's always time for this this engine to pulse and pull an item out of this auto crafting table before the bucket's gone. Now how I'm doing this is a little trick I came up with on my own but it's probably someone else's idea before mine but I did come up with it to myself so you know I feel proud about it. I'm using a redstone timer to produce a pulse and then I have a redstone repeater which elongates that pulse just long enough to turn this torch off which having a blinking torch signal is just enough to make it pull items out but not too much to make it actually ever speed up so this will perpetually stay blue so that's a little neat little trick so okay we have the four blocks here just handle resources we have these four blocks produces infinite sand we gather the resources here we have a water little loop here that gives us infinite buckets full of water and we have a crafting table the crafting table produces the peat bog which comes over here to again guess what a relay I know I'm really abusing these relays so this relay is here just for space purposes it puts items in and puts them out very easy we don't actually need this here we could run it with a pipe or whatever or not but this works just because I wanted space saving. So okay, that's everything here. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Um, I realize it's a little complex, but it's pretty compact. You could make it a little cleaner if you'd like, but I felt this was an easy way to see what was going on and to keep everything nice and neat. So okay, hopefully you understand the four basic farms here. Now let's try to understand the inside. Now, the first thing I'm going to point out is we have solar panels right here. These are red power solar panels, not IC2. And this is because we are using Bluetricity for the red power um, sorting machines. Now, these I found to be not absolutely necessary, but amazingly useful. 
Um, you can feel free to not use them if you'd like and instead use just the BuildCraft piping system. However, this video is going to be covering how to use red power tubes for this machinery type. Um, I still do use some BuildCraft pipes as you can obviously see over there. However, this is a primarily red power tubed system. So I will be covering it as we go through it. But basically these are basic solar panels and we are wiring the power down into the bottom. Now let's get on to the tough part explaining the underside of this machine.